Why is snow white, but ice is colourless? Shh, quiet. They will hear us. They have probably got this place bugged to the rafters. It's a global cover-up. The government are trying to control us. Shh. Snow is white, right? But ice and water? They are clear. What are they trying to do to us? Some kind of evil, elaborate, chemical, mind-altering substance? I can hear them laughing already. Well, not quite. Nothing even remotely close to that, unsurprisingly. But why is snow white? Shouldn't it be transparent, like water or ice? I mean, it's nothing special, it is just water. What makes it different? Hi, Danny Ward here. Welcome to Knowledgega. Snow. While it absolutely brings the UK to a grinding halt for weeks, whenever we get even just a light dusting of the stuff, it's always good to see the fluffy white stuff. But why is it white? Well, this is all to do with how light interacts with the structure. Snow forms when ice crystals are generated from moisture in the air as the temperature drops. These ice crystals collide and form snowflakes, which fall from the clouds once they have become heavy enough. All these ice crystals mean a large number of surfaces that light entering the structure can reflect off of. This means that all the light that went in, the light incident, equally reflects back out into the observer's eye. When all wavelengths of light are equally absorbed by material, it will appear black. Likewise, if all the light is equally reflected, like in the case of snow, it will appear white. The light wavelength reflection is not always equal though, especially with deeper snow. The deeper snow will quite happily absorb red colours, but will reflect blue. This predominantly blue reflection is scattered out and sent to our eyes, which is why when you are digging holes in snow, sometimes it can have a blue hue to it. Same with ice. That can appear blue when in particularly bright sunlight. That raises the question though, how comes ice can be completely transparent? Much like glass, the light photons enter the ice structure and passes straight through it. It's not absorbed, it's not reflected. Easy, right? Well, hold your horses, because there's a little more to it. Remember when I said the photons aren't absorbed or reflected? Well, that may have been a little white lie. The photons are scattered by interatomic bonds, but the direction of light does not change, unlike as it does when light scatters from snow. A material on a minute level will be made up from lots of tiny atoms. Surrounding these atoms will be electrons that are able to change energy state. With both glass and ice, the distance between the electron energy states is too great to jump, meaning preserve directional light scattering. The glass or ice acts as a linear dialectic. With opaque or non-transparent materials, the electrons surrounding the atoms can change energy states in response to light, meaning these electrons can absorb certain wavelengths while reflecting others, meaning they have a solid colour. Why is there such a big energy jump for glass or ice? This is based on the atomic structure of the material. The atomic order, structural defects, quantum effects and charges all have an impact. This large band gap, as it is known, is particularly present in the visible light range that we see. However, when we look towards ultraviolet light on the edge of the spectrum that we can't see with our naked eye, ice can look quite opaque. Additionally, water expands as it freezes, leading to a very empty final lattice structure. There will be less chance light will interact with an atom, in which case it can pass straight on through. We could venture even further, but it involves quantum mechanics and a lot of technical jargon. Yeah, maybe for another day. Ice with a lot of impurities will 
not be transparent and often will be quite white. Light can and will interact with these molecules as they possess different properties to that of the ice. The light can be absorbed or reflected in a scattered manner due to altered band gaps, meaning they will have a different colour, namely white, where all wavelengths are reflected equally. And here's a little trick if you want clear ice cubes at home. If you make them with a plastic tray or get them straight from an ice dispenser, they're more often than not pretty white, not quite as picturesque. Instagrammers around the world would be trembling with fear. But if you boil the water prior to freezing or use distilled water, the impurities won't be present. You will get clearer ice by doing it, but it still won't be perfect. For that perfectly clear ice, you also have to freeze the ice cube in stages, letting the ice slowly form higher temperatures, layer by layer, without any air bubbles forming and freezing. This is what they do to make that really clear ice you can find at the store. No impurities or air bubbles? Well, now you've got yourself there some mighty fine ice. Bourbon lovers, rejoice. Your whiskey on the rocks is saved. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode of Knowledgeka. Be sure to tune in next time for more random things to learn about. You'll be great at pub quizzes if you keep this up. Stay hungry for factuality.